Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 24th of May 2021. The day is Monday. Right now, I am with the Cambridge class. It's the 10th Cambridge class. And we have started studying the syllabus for the 11th Cambridge. Subject we are studying is physics 5054. Today, this is the first lesson of our first, uh, first lecture on the topic of current and electricity. So on your screen, um, I have shared a text and that's about the current and electricity. Basically, you can see what happened. If you have a neutral atom, in the neutral atom, always we have uh, two charges. Uh, one is negative charge, the other one is positive charge. The negative charge is due to the uh, electrons present in the orbits. And the positive charge is due to the protons, which is which are inside the nucleus. So in our course, you know, um, the electrons um, which are in the orbits, we can take away them from an atom. And we can also give electrons to an atom. Atom naturally is neutral. Um, it means that the number of electrons and number of protons in an atom, they are equal to each other. The amount of the positive charge and amount of the negative charge in an atom is equal to each other. So atom always have a positive charge. It has negative charges. But they are equal in number. They are equal in amount. So that's why the atom as a whole is normally neutral. But the thing which you should understand is that the, it's possible for us that we can take away an electron from an atom, from its orbits, and we can also give electron to an atom. So if, for example, if you have a neutral atom and you take away its electron, so that atom will behave like a positive ion because there will be more protons as compared to electrons because you have taken away its electron. If you give electron, extra electrons to an atom, now the number of electrons will be more as compared to the number of protons. So the atom will behave like a negative ion. The important thing here is that for, for us in our syllabus of physics, it is possible that I can take a, a, a electron and separate it. So electron will be a negative charge and that electron can also move it out. For example, if you have copper wire, it's possible that from one point of the copper wire to the other, part, other end of the copper wire, the electrons might travel. They might go from one point to other point. And uh, so this is possible that the electrons may be moving around separately independently the electrons are present there and the electrons are also present inside the uh, in the orbits of an atom so the negative uh, charge can be in two forms it it could be independent um, electrons separated from their atoms that can be a negative charge or a negative ion negative ion is when an atom will have more electrons as compared to its proton so you can have negative ions, you can have negative uh, separated uh, electrons. But this cannot be case with the protons. The protons cannot be separated. Uh, you cannot take uh, the protons out of nucleus. And it's not possible that you might have protons, only protons around you. No, this is not possible. You can have... So it means that the positive charge cannot be like uh, electrons, a single electron or two electrons or three electrons. The positive charge cannot be like this. So you do not have um, a one proton or two protons moving around in a copper wire. No, that's not possible. It is possible that uh, you might have positive ions. For example, when you do electrolysis, you might have studied in your chemistry that you have uh, uh, sodium positive one, 
that's a positive ion that is possible but it's not possible that you have a single proton running around so we have charges basically there are two kinds of charges we have positive charges we have negative charges the negative charges are due to the electron the positive charges are due to the protons electrons uh, and you can also have positive ion you can have negative ion and the one point i am trying to emphasize on is that it is possible that you have independent electrons free electrons you have electrons which are not, not attached with any kind of atom but it's not possible that you have protons which are not you have separated them from their atom protons are inside the nucleus and you cannot take them out you can have positive ions there's no problem but you cannot have protons separated now if you have charges and the charges are moving if you have charges and the charges are moving this is called current so if you have charges and the charges are not moving this is called static uh, charge or we call it static electricity this is called static charge but if the charges whether they are electrons means negative charge and that's moving whether that's negative ions they are moving or you have positive ions and they are moving if the charges are moving this is called current exact definition of the and the current this is how you understand that for example if i have a copper wire and i i see if i can see if the electrons are passing from in the copper wire i will say the current it has current because the charges are moving even the charges are moving this is called current so you see uh, we can have current and the current is basically the when the charges move that is called current now uh, you know the charge in the static electricity we have studied this the charge is measured in coulombs and is represented with the capital c the charge is measured in coulombs with capital it's represented with the capital c so the charge is basically the amount of charge that's measured in coulombs and represented with the capital c exact definition of the electric current is that amount of charge passing from a point in unit time now what does this these first mean amount of charge means how much charge in unit time how much charge is flowing from a point in unit time that is called electric current so amount of charge how many coulombs per unit time means in one second so it means that in one second how much charge is flowing from a point that is that this is how you will find the electric current formula for the electric current is very simple you see the formula uh, for the electric current i i hope that this is visible on your screen the formula for the electric current let me show this now i'm showing on the full screen the formula for the electric current is uh, charge divided by time you can see this formula very famous formula okay the formula is charge divided by time remember this formula current is equals to charge divided by time so charge will be measured in coulombs and the time will be measured in seconds and in this formula this you see the formula is i is equals to q by t so q is representing the amount of charge t is representing the time and i represents the amount of current so um, q is measured in coulombs time is measured in seconds and i which means current that is measured in ampere is si units system international unit is ampere represented with the capital a remember in this formula the time is always taken in seconds it's never taken in minutes it's never taken in hours it's never taken in milliseconds the charge is always measured in coulombs so 
um, for from the O levels point of view, this formula is very very important. This is the today's main task to understand this formula. Current is equals to charge divided by time. I is equals to Q divided by time. The SI unit of the ampere is uh, current is ampere represented with the capital A. And here you can see that electrolysis you have studied in your chemistry, where we have positive and negative ions in the solution. The you know the 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 ampere ampere is quite a large unit, and uh, we also have smaller units for measuring the current that are milliampere. Milliampere actually is a prefix milli. Milli means ten raised to the power minus three. So one milliampere is basically one thousandth. One thousandth. So it means. 10 raised to the power minus 3 ampere or 1 by 1000, 1 by 1000 actually, 1 divided by 1000. So milli means 10 raised to the power minus 3 ampere. In the same way, we have micro ampere. These, these are the smaller units for used for current. Micro means uh, uh, 1 uh, millionth, 1 millionth of an ampere. 1 millionth means 10 raised to power minus 6, 10 raised to power minus 6 ampere, or 1 divided by 1 million. That is micro, uh, sorry, that's uh, yeah, micro, that, that's micro ampere. Sorry, I said coulomb, micro ampere. Okay, so uh, you see, tr try to understand this idea that when you have a wire copper wire for example and copper is a conductor and you know the conductors they always have free electrons in them now the question is what are free electrons in the atom of a metal or any conductor the electrons which are in the outermost shell they are not that much attached with the nucleus they have uh, ability to leave their own atom, the, the orbit of their own atom, and they go into the orbit of another atom. Same matter, they go into the orbit of another. And you try to understand, for example, you have a copper wire. And copper wire is like a solid, it is solid. And the free electrons in the copper wire, they have ability to flow. We use the word flow from one end to the other end. So they can roam around the, the atoms of the cop, con, uh, copper. When it, 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 it's, uh, they are fixed in their positions. They only vibrate about their fixed positions. They cannot move around the atoms of the copper. But you know, the free electrons, they roam around in the copper wire. From left end, they can go to the right end. From top, they can go to the bottom. So they are free to move around in the copper wire. Now, how, uh, whenever you use a battery, whenever you use a battery, so that battery, what the function of that battery is basically, it will provide the energy to move those electrons in the wires or we use the word circuit. So basic function of a battery is to provide energy to the charge particles to move in the in the circuit, in the copper wires, in the in, through the fan, through the bulb, through the speaker, whatever you think you are using. So basically, the, the batteries or the source of electricity, it provides basically the energy to those charged particles to move them in the circuit. Okay, so here we have on your screen, let me increase the size so I can show you an example. From Olaf's point of view, the most important thing, uh, which I have just taught you, the most important thing is this numerical. Here we have, if 0 0.5 Coulomb charge passes through a wire in 10 seconds, then what will be the value of the current flowing through the wire? So you see, uh, we have 0 0.5 Coulomb 
that's the amount of charge. The time is 10 seconds. Their question is how much is the current? So you know the current formula is charge divided by time. So you know the charge is 0 0.5 coulomb. You divide it with the 10 seconds. So 0 0.5 divided by 10, do this on the calculator, you will get the answer 0 0.05 ampere. 0 0.05 ampere. So if I multiply this 0 0.05 ampere with 1000, it will be converted into milliampere. So it will be 50 milliampere. If you write the answer 0 0.05 ampere, it's good, no problem. And if you know the uh, prefixes, you can convert this into milliamperes. If you write this answer, it will be good, no problem. So I hope you have understood this uh, numerical. And if you want to do more numerical on it, you can do that. This formula, this formula, I'm talking about this formula. From all levels physics point of view, this formula is very, very important. In theory questions, in MCQs, this question, this numeric, this formula, its application, its use is tested. Now, now we come to another very important point. The current in your syllabus, the current, whenever I use the word current, and during my explanation, I told you, I talked about the electrons. They are will they will be flowing in the wires. The charged particles, basically. And for current, we have two, um, two kinds of current. One is called conventional current. The other one is called electron flow. And both of them are actually the same, but little difference in them. And they happen at the same time. So wherever you will have electron flow, there you will have conventional current. Wherever you, have, wherever you will have conventional current, there you will have electron flow. But in our syllabus, when I use the word current in the physics 5054 syllabus, whenever I use the word current, it will automatically mean I'm talking about conventional current. So whenever the word current is used in your syllabus, it will mean conventional current. So what's conventional current? Conventional current is that current from this diagram I can explain you. Here you have a resistor. What's a resistor? It's a, it's a device which converts the electric energy into heat. It's not like heater, but it converts the electric energy into heat. So you see from here, you connect it. These are the copper wires. Here we have a switch, and this is the symbol for the battery. You have already studied this in your science lessons. So here I have a battery. And this is the pot. You know, the battery has two terminals, positive terminal, negative terminal. And here you can see we have the positive terminal of the battery. And I have connected this resistance, or we call it a resistor actually, resistor with this uh, battery. Here we have a switch. When I will, I will close this switch, I means this switch will be on. And this positive terminal. So a current will flow from the positive terminal of the battery through the copper wires, through the resistor, back to the negative terminal of the battery. This is called conventional current. So conventional current is that current in which the charges will be flowing from the positive terminal of the battery through the circuit towards the negative terminal of the battery. So if somebody asks you, okay, what is the conventional current? Conventional current is that current which comes out of the positive terminal of the battery, passes through the circuit, and goes back into the negative terminal of the battery. That is called conventional current. So for example, if somebody asks you here, what is the direction of the convention, conventional current? So the conventional current here will be flowing from the from, from the left to the right. The conventional current in the resistor is flowing from the left towards the right. Because this is the direction from left to right. 
This is the direction of the conventional current. Conventional current is basically due to the flow of positive charges. The conventional current is basically due to the flow of the positive charges. But now I know that the positive charges in the copper wire will not have positive charges, which can flow in the copper, solid copper wires. You will not have independent positive charges, which can flow, which can move from one point to another point. But in your syllabus, whenever I say current, I mean conventional. Actually, the current is flow of, actually, the current is due to the, in the copper wires. Here in this example, actually, the current is due to the flow of electrons. If you talk about the electron flow, the second kind of current is electron flow. Electron flow comes out of the negative terminal of the battery. And it goes to the positive terminal of the battery through the circuit. So electron flow comes out of the negative terminal of the battery, passes through the circuit, and comes back into the positive terminal of the battery. So that's electron flow. So whenever there will be a current, there will be conventional current, and the same current is actually the electron flow. But when I say conventional current, it will be flowing from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery. But when I say electron flow, it will be flowing from the negative terminal of the battery towards the positive terminal of the battery through the cell. So the conventional current and the electron flow, they are basically equal in magnitude, but they will be in the opposite directions. For example, the, the diagram which is showing up on your screen, if somebody asks me what is the direction of the conventional current through this resistor, so that is from left to right. But if somebody asks me what is the direction of the electron flow through the resistor, that will be from right to left. So the conventional current from positive through the circuit towards negative, but the electron flow will be from the negative terminal of the battery through the circuit towards the positive terminal of the battery. So this is called conventional current. So the conventional current is defined as current flowing from positive to the negative terminal of a battery due to the flow of the positive charges is called conventional current. The conventional current produces the same effect as the current flowing from negative terminal to the positive terminal due to the flow of negative charges. So basically they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and they happen at the same time. But in our syllabus, whenever your examiner will say current, it will mean conventional current, or he might use the proper word conventional current. If you only use the word current, it means conventional current. If he wants electron flow, he will properly specify that he's talking about electron flow. So electron flow will have the same effect, it will have the same magnitude, but its direction will be opposite to the direction of the conventional current. So, uh, till now, we have studied two things. So, try to understand. Till now, we have... Let me reduce the size so you can see the page. Okay, so this is the whole... So, till now, we have studied basically only two things. One thing that what is the formula for the current? That is charge divided by time. And the second th thing which we have learned is that the current can be of two kinds. One is called conventional current. One is called electron flow. And the conventional current in our syllabus, the current will be always conventional. Means whenever he use the word current, it will automatically mean he's talked about conventional current. If he wants you to consider electron flow in your syllabus, in your exams, in your assessments, in your textbook, if he wants you to consider electron flow, he will properly mention I'm talking about electron. Okay, one very important, another very important point is that um, the, the function of the battery, the battery's function is basically to provide the energy to the charges which are present in those free electrons which are present in the conductor wires 
the function of the battery is not to provide the charges its function is basically to provide the energy to the charges which are in the wires and obviously they, they, they move around how it provide energy we will discuss it later uh, but today's function is basically to understand these two points and then to measure, uh, learn how to measure measure the current how you will measure the current so if you want to measure the current you see the very uh, important thing is that we basically use an instrument if you want to measure the current uh, we use an instrument that instrument is has two names one is one instrument is called galvanometer and the other instrument is called ammeter so one of the instruments is called galvanometer the other one is called uh, ammeter so let me show you the diagram of these meters here on your screen um, you see these are the two meters so this one is called galvanometer you can see uh, here we have in the center we have zero on this side i have 10 20 30 here i have 10 20 30 so the galvanometer's pointer basically remains in the center its zero is in the center so its pointer is like in the center the pointer can deflect to the left it can also deflect to the right so here the second diagram this is called the ammeter so ammeter normally its zero is on the left side and and the readings go towards the right side you can say that you see the calibration i hope and this is for example it's written i think one two three four five so it's measuring the thing in amp, amp, uh, ampere and so these are the two instruments this is called galvanometer it's a center zero galvanometer and here we have a ammeter ammeter and the galvanometer they are basically used to measure the current which is flowing through at a set through a certain point or through a certain component or uh, through any resistor or through any fan or through any light bulb on the ammeter you can see we have two uh here these these, these are for connections so these are actually screws and you can lose them and then you can put a cable here and you can tie them so one uh, this one connection is of red color the other connection is of black color the red color is always connected with that wire which is coming from the positive terminal of the battery and the black terminal the black uh, connection here this one this is used to connect that wire which is coming from the negative terminal of the battery. So you can see this, this is ammeter, ammeter has a positive, term, uh, has a, a red colored terminal and a black colored terminal. The red colored terminal is attached with the positive side of the battery, the wire which is coming from the positive side of the battery and the, the black uh, terminal is connected with that wire which is coming from the negative terminal of the battery. So this is ammeter. If you want to, for example, if I if, if I have here a circuit. So try to understand this circuit. Here I have a battery. Here I have a bulb. And here I have a switch. So when I will close this switch, the circuit will be completed. The bulb will light up. And okay, so the charges are basically flowing. The current is flowing. And if you want to measure how much current is flowing through the lamp, remember this word, series. I'm saying the word series. What is series? I will explain you. But the word is series. Whenever you want to measure the current flowing through this bulb, the ammeter should be connected in series with that uh, component or with that appliance through which you want to measure how much current is flowing. So the ammeter is used to measure the current and the ammeter should always be connected in series uh, uh, with that device, with that appliance, with that component through which you want to measure how much current is flowing. Series, I'm saying using the word series. So um, here you see, here we have how we have connected. Series mean that you provide a single loop 
or a single path for the charges. So you provide is the, the the circuit that copper wire is like a road. It's like a road. So you make sure series. What's the meaning of series? Series mean that you make sure that whatever the charges they are passing through the bulb, the same charges, same amount of charges should pass through the emitter. For example, the current is coming, suppose we are talking about conventional current. So the current is coming from here. So all the current passed through the emitter and the same current will pass through that bulb. So if you want to measure the current flowing through the bulb, then the emitter should be connected in series with the bulb. And this means that the same amount of current should, or same amount of charges, same charges, they should be flowing to the emitter and to the bulb. There should be not two paths for the current. There should not be two paths, a separate path for emitter and a separate path for the bulb. This should not happen. The ammeter should be connected in series. It means you will provide a single road for the traffic of the charges. So whenever you want to measure the amount of current flowing through, for example, bulb, that, remember this for this my wording. Ammeter is used, and ammeter should be connected in series with the bulb. So um, so three things. We have learned three things till now. One, what is the current? Current is the charges divided by time. Second thing, current is of two kinds. Conventional current and electron flow. And our syllabus, current means conventional current. If he wants to mention, if he wants you to consider electron flow, then he will properly use the word electron flow or electron current. Or if he only use the word current, it means conventional current. Conventional current is due to the positive charges. It is it flows from the positive terminal of the battery through the circuit and goes to the negative terminal of the battery. The third thing we learned today is how to measure current in a in, through a component, through a bulb, through a resistor, through a heater, through a speaker. We use ammeters or we use galvanometers and we attach them in series with that appliance through which you are trying to measure the amount of current. And what does the series mean? It means you provide a single path for the current to flow. So these are the three main points. This was the basic lesson of for today. And um, I have already, um, I think, uploaded a topic on uh, a lesson, a, a video recorded lesson on the potential difference. So uh, that's, I think, enough for today. And so everyone, uh, I think uh, it's enough. Uh, thank you very much. Today's this was this is the basic first lecture on the current and electricity. And so I think it's enough for today. So thank you very much, everybody, and, and have a good day. And God bless you all.